Welcome back to our ballroom dance tutorials. Today's tutorial is going to be a little less formal. We're going to be um, telling some stories, showing you um, some funny videos. Um, yeah, do so you want to sure explain, you... explain the theme of today's, today's topic? Yeah, so we have some really funny um, archived footage coming to you at the end of this video, so make sure that you watch till the end. Um, basically, we wanted to talk about one of the biggest mistakes we feel, or one of the biggest misconceptions that we think uh, lower level dancers and beginner dancers make. Um, and that's actually more about, less about the technical side of dancing and more about the uh, psychological, mental side of it. And that is that um, when you watch your dance idols, like the dance legends, your favorite dancers, and you watch them live or you watch a video, uh, it's very easy to think like, oh my God, they're so good and they've always been good and I can never, I will never, it doesn't matter how hard I work, I'll never be able to get to that level. Uh, and maybe that's true for some people, but um, the fact is that it doesn't matter how good the dancer is, if you go back far enough and you find a video of them from maybe five years ago or 10 years ago, you'll see that uh, they've improved a lot since then and if you go back far enough, you'll see that they weren't always as good as you think they are, or as good as they are now. Everyone started somewhere, and um, becoming a skilled, good dancer takes a lot of practice and a lot of hard work. No one is born an incredible born dancer. So today's tutorial is kind of going to run you through um, where we've been and the funny uh, mistakes and are things that have happened to us at competitions that maybe people didn't know <laughs> have happened to us. Yeah, so even for us, like we're professional dancers and we've had uh, together in the last four and a half years that we've been dancing together, but also over our entire dancing journey so far, we've had many um, funny and unusual and blunders along the way in competitions and in practice and um, so we're just going to share some of our stories um, to show you that we've we've come a long way from when we were beginners and lower level dancers and you should try not to let that stop you from becoming the best dancer that you can because dancing's hard enough physically that you know if you set a limitation to yourself then that's just going to make it impossible. So stay on in this video till the very end because we're going to share um, actually some of Jonathan's bloopers from when he was a child. Um, but first of all, I wanted to kind of discuss um, our first competition together. So our first competition competition was the national championships in Australia, and they were that was in Canberra. Um, and it was a very interesting competition for us. Yeah. We had high expectations. We, I think, yeah, we were both coming in um, with good results in previous partnerships at this competition. And uh, we trained pretty hard and we thought we were pretty ready. And uh, I think it was maybe in the second round or something. There's a lot of rounds at this competition. Yeah, I think maybe actually. we danced f maybe four or five rounds. Four or five rounds, maybe. yeah. Um, I started to feel some sort of pain in my, in my leg. And uh, I thought uh, it should be fine. Like I've done many comps before. I'll just stretch it out and I'll I'll just keep going, I'll get through it. And then I think before the final, after the semi-final, we had like a really long break. So I think we went back to the hotel and I got my dad to stretch me out, like to stretch out my hamstring and my groin because I wanted a deeper stretch. And at that point, Jonathan did not stretch. He was not stretching uh, through practice. So yeah. this was probably a new thing to add to the <laughs> to our, uh, our competition preparation. Anyway, so we get to the final and um, before you dance the final with all the six couples, you dance a uh, intro dance. So everyone gets to see you by yourself. And we had quick step as our intro dance. And as we were walking kind of onto the floor, um, I just had all this pain in my, in my groin and I completely blanked all of my routines and especially my quick step routine which I was about to dance I just took up holes with Talissa and I just went and I just started <laughs> dancing and 
The and funny I, thing is he was convinced that he'd done his routine. Yeah. We walked off the floor and I was like, what, what was that? That 30 second intro dance, I had no idea what routine you were I was doing. like, what are you talking about? I did, <laughs> I did our routine. And then I watched the video after the comp and I did not recognize any of the steps that we done. Even one of our competitors that we were training with quite regularly was like, no, Jonathan, that wasn't your routine. <laughs> I yeah. know what the start of your routine looks like. So that was our- Very funny uh, and interesting first experience. Yeah, that was our first cop together. Um, so that was, that was a good one. Taught us that one, we need to introduce making sure that we are getting the correct stretches in when we're doing our staminas. Yeah. And, um, what else did it teach us? Not a whole lot more. Just making sure that you're prepared physically. Uh, don't change choreography. If yeah, you don't have to. Definitely don't change choreography. That's <laughs> Especially for quick step. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's another funny one? Actually, there's a um, there was a competition that we were doing in England at the Coke Fulham Hotel. And we had a very funny experience in Vini's Walls. This one's actually not so long ago. So that <laughs> first story, that was like nearly five years ago. This one was last year, yeah. I think. Yeah, it was last year. Yeah. And uh, we're dancing and uh, the venue is much smaller at this competition. So it's more intimate and the judges are standing on the floor and you really feel their presence. It's really high level judges so as well. So we're, we're dancing Vini's Waltz around the floor, around the floor. And I think because this floor, it kind of has like joins in them. So sometimes you kind of have to oh, almost, almost pick up your feet so that you don't... <laughs> trip over. Anyway, I ended up, when I should be closing my feet, I ended up s slightly s standing on my foot and uh, I didn't, I wasn't <laughs> able to take my next step. And in Vini's Waltz is very fast dance and you're, you're moving and turning and it's all super, super fast. And I didn't have a leg to, to catch my body. And I just, I just... <laughs> you know who's in front to catch you? So I just Me. fall bashed into Talissa's body and I felt all the air just leave her lungs <laughs> and uh, we actually right at that time in the position on the floor we were in front of a judge that we know quite well so that was extra embarrassing yeah um, yeah I felt <laughs> all of Jonathan's weight in my arms and body he's never felt so heavy in his entire life <laughs> yeah, that was oh, I felt sorry for Talissa in that one um What's, a, what's another one that we've had together? Um, just thinking. I, yeah, the black hole one. I think this is our first one. I, yes, together. it was, I was wearing the white and silver dress. The white so one, that yeah. was definitely, yeah, our first black pool. Yeah, so this is, so if you don't know, Blackpool Dance Festival is like the mecca of dancing, boring dancing, so it's the biggest competition, the most prestigious competition in the world. And uh, everyone from all over the world, they all migrate in May. Normally it's in May, but this year, obviously, with the coronavirus, it's been pushed back. But mm. um, anyway, so this is our first Blackpool together, and I was very nervous. And uh, actually, it was your first Blackpool ever, wasn't it? Yeah, it was my first Blackpool, but yeah. our first Blackpool, so it yeah. had been before. And uh, so we're doing Foxtrot, uh, and we're going down the middle of the floor doing three four ways, which is a very beautiful Foxtrot figure. When um, both couples are going, what both people are going backwards yeah. at certain points. So <laughs> I didn't see, I couldn't see for a couple of seconds where I was going. So I was going backwards, and uh, unfortunately, I we, I colli see we collided <laughs> with another couple coming in the opposite direction, and I my leg got tripped up, and I just fell right on my bum. And, and I fell into my knee, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Somehow. And this was like <laughs> twisted a, and fell into this was my like knee. Right in the middle of the floor on black wall. So yeah. you really feel under pressure and you want to get back up. And I think I distinctly remember you like giving me a really dirty look. Like <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Get up right now yeah. and keep going. Um Yeah, but I mean these things happen, <laughs> like sometimes you just fall over and it's you don't even slip, you just get tripped up and Yeah, and yeah. I think um, a lot of our YouTube watchers would know that at Blackpool you have a very, very tiny chance to be seen by the judges, especially in those early rounds. So if you're on the floor for the three seconds yeah. that one judge gets to look at you, they won't be marking you into the next round. So yeah, <laughs> we, got, we got up pretty, pretty fast after that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do we learn from that one? Essentially, you know, always try to look as far as you can yeah. where, where you're going to be going, I guess. 
That's... I mean, it's difficult when there's a lot of couples on the floor, but it's trying to be as visually aware as you can. Um, yeah, sometimes today it's a little bit harder because people's choreography is maybe less predictable. Like, you yeah, know, that's the, true. people change directions m more suddenly. and. Mm. Um, but it's a floor craft is a very important skill, and I think there's a few different elements to floor craft. But um, yeah, always try to don't dance blindly. Mm. In uh, in Blackpool, actually, I remember um, with another partner um, before before I danced with Jonathan. Uh, I don't know how many people know this, but there's essentially group practices before an event so essentially anyone who's doing ballroom can come onto the floor they'll put a waltz tango foxtrot on they'll put the music on and you can just dance around like a general practice a general practice but um the floor is exceptionally busy during these practices because there are essentially no studios in blackpool to um prepare prepare for your competition day so yeah. I, I can't even explain to you, unless you've been there and experienced it, how full it is. So in a, in a square metre, there is about two couples in it. So it's like, you can't really do much of your routine. But I remember on this, this one day, very clearly, we were going through our tango. And one of the, uh, one of, one of the competitors there at Blackpool, I'm not even sure who it was, was practicing a certain step, obviously didn't see me, and kicked me right in the butt, extremely, extremely hard. I can't even Maybe tell you. Probably as well, yeah. I don't even know, but <laughs> the bruise was this big on my bum for a very long time. It was yeah. so painful. Very dangerous, those practices, very, yeah. very dangerous. Yeah, so we actually avoid them there, yeah, don't sometimes we? Sometimes we, we choose just to not practice there and maybe practice in a, in a smaller mm -hmm. space. They've or... actually opened up a little practice last year. They opened a little practice that hall really near nice, the, yeah. um, the exhibitors. Yeah. That was yeah. really good. Um, well, if we're, if we're on to already stories with other partners, so this is now going back, uh, long time ago when I was... You were dancing Latin at the time, yeah? Yeah, so I used to dance Latin, used to do 10 dance, um, and so did Talissa, but I was practicing, this wasn't even my last partner, this was two partners ago. This was my second dance partner, and I was practicing Latin in the studio, and I remember I was chewing gum in my mouth, and I was practicing... Such a cool and kid. Yeah. Chewing and practicing. And I think I was, I think it's like a, what's it called? Like a, not a Turkish towel. What's that step for you? I, um, I don't know. Turkish towel is like behind. No, no, it's not that one. It's kind of like, I think it was like maybe samba or something. And my partner was like next to me and I spun her in, rolling the arm. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I spun her in and then changed arm and then spun her out. So she like, she kind of was over there at one point and then she's crossing me and then she's on the other side and she's just spinning and she was a really good Latin dancer so she you know she could spin pretty fast I remember I was doing this step and I was chewing my gum and uh, <laughs> and then all of a sudden while I'm chewing her hair just like lodges in my mouth as she's spinning and I must have like chewed right as, as her hair was in my mouth and the chewing gum got stuck to her hair and then she spun up so quickly that the gum just like flew across the studio, across the floor. Oh, like, and it went maybe like five, ten meters. Like it was a it was a decent and it was kind of like in slow motion where you see the gum just like leave your mouth and then just like <laughs> go off into the distance. And I had to like really embarrassingly walk across the studio and pick up my gum from the floor and I think I think after that, it didn't get lodged into into her hair. She had or to cut a chunk or flying out. to someone else that was practicing. Oh, that's true. That wouldn't have been very good. What's the lesson learned from lesson that? Lesson there: don't practice with chewing gum. Although probably in Bourne it's a little bit safer, but no, still probably not the best. It. It's not classy. Not the best look. <laughs> yeah, actually, I've got another chewing gum related story, uh, which was, and there's very definitely a lesson in this one. Um, I was. This was even younger. This was with my first dance partner who I was dancing together with for like six or seven years. And she was, well, so we we're doing this competition and I think we were doing like lots and lots of dancing. So I would sit down and then get up and dance. And one time I sat on the stage in the venue and 
got up and had to go to the marshalling area and then go on to dance. And this was actually, I was doing New Vogue at the time, which is like an Australian style of dancing that is like a, almost like a synchronized dancing. Everyone does the same routines, the same steps at the same time around the floor. So it's very structured and you, everyone learns the same routine. And what happened? Anyway, I sat on the stage, go to the marching area and start dancing on the floor. And I, as I'm dancing around the floor slowly, um, I'm seeing everyone in the audience kind of like smiling at me, really funny and looking at me. And even a couple of judges were kind of like giving me very strange facial expressions. And I thought there was just something going on. Maybe someone behind me was doing something very fancy. I don't know. Uh, anyway, I get off the floor and my mum's like, Jonathan, like you've got a rip in your pants. And I'm like, what are you talking about? A rip? I, I don't think I do. She goes, yeah, you do. And it looks like we can see, we can see things that we shouldn't see. I'm like, it's not, see your skin. I doubt it. And then uh, it turns out that when I s uh, sat down on the stage, I sat in chewing gum, like white chewing gum, but the placement of the chewing gum was very particular in one little area. So it looked like your bum. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on YouTube, but um, yeah, it was very uh, direct. What would you say? I don't know. Was it your gum? No, I don't think it was my gum, but uh, the moral what of the story is the lesson learned is um, watch what you're seeing when you're wearing your dancing clothes at a competition so even now if i'm sitting down and i'm wearing my tail suit i always check the the seat whether it's dusty or dirty or wet or whatever and you do the same i know it surprises me actually how many people walk around in their dance clothes within a hotel if the competition's in a hotel or even outside crossing roads I, I, it really shocks me when people do that i'd probably try to not wear my costume as as little as I can, so... Or oh, you wear a robe? Oh, yeah, but I mean, I put my dress on right before I walk on. I wouldn't spend hours in it when I'm not dancing, but... Yeah. That's, that's not a fun experience for whoever had to get that gum off your, yeah. <laughs> off your suit, yeah. off your tail. But uh, definitely there's a lesson there. I think. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think there's probably enough funny stories, but the moral of the story is... Don't make the mistake of thinking <laughs> that good dancers have always been good dancers. So that good dancers make mistakes when they were younger. They it took time for them to get to where they are. Yeah, everyone's everyone's had had bad things happen to them on the dance floor. Whether it's a funny story that you can tell later on, or whether it's something you never want to think about ever again. <laughs> yeah, um, it happens to everyone. So. Um, I guess there's some kind of um, relief in, in knowing that. Yeah, I think it will finish off this video now. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. let's let's share Jonathan's uh, blooper reel with you guys. I hope you enjoy it. So I, for my 21st birthday, I th yeah, for my 21st birthday a few years ago, my dad compiled all these funny all, well, all my dancing videos, but all of my falls and um, mistakes and things, and he compiled it to a. But he went well back. <laughs> so yeah, this was going back lots to lots of younger juvenile junior days. Younger and, videos, and it's so uh, the quality is not great because uh, there's no 4K or 2K or whatever 1080P. It's not there, but uh, it's really funny. So we hope you enjoy watching it, uh, and we hope you've learned something from this more informal tutorial. Um, yeah, enjoy we'd the love, video. We'd love it if you could share your funny stories with us as well. So please put them in the comments below. Um, enjoy this blooper reel. We'll see you guys in the next one.